Ladies and gentlemen, let me quickly take you back for just a moment of repose to contextualize the conversation we are about to have, which of course is not going to come to a sun conclusion because the sun conclusion will shortly be yours in a couple of months time when you go cast your votes. But five years ago, as we were hitting this stage a few weeks before a general election in the largest democracy in the world, 700 plus million people going out there to potentially cast their votes. You were seeing a charged political atmosphere. We know what the conversations were about. Five years ago, it was about Chaukidar Chor Hai, Rafael Deal. The BJP, for a large part, which migrated from Sabka Saad, Sabka Vikas to Modi Wave and Modi Tsunami from 2014 to 2019. This time around, is talking about the Modi guarantee. The Prime Minister, just few weeks, perhaps days before an election is called, is out and about not only inaugurating projects, which means they are completed, finished, but also starting off on new ones. He's just come back from Odisha. He's gone straight to Assam. Several thousand crores in Odisha. 11,500 crores of projects being announced in Assam. Now, do project announcements happen before a general election? Absolutely, they do. Narendra Modi won't be the first, uh, certainly won't be the last at state level or at, uh, at the larger level. But from the Congress leadership, and in this case, the President, Malik Arjun Kharge, the first part of the headline has been, this will be India's last election if Modi wins. He has now added a suffix. You shall all become slaves of Modi if the BJP wins. So the rhetoric is large. The question then becomes, within the rhetoric of he said, she said, save democracy versus save India, who has the better plan to offer you? Let's open up this conversation. Joining us on the broadcast, representing uh, the point of view of the Bharatiya Janata Party is Vinita Hariharan. Sujata Paul, representing the point of view of the Congress. Deshratan Nigam is with us as well. And Nikhil uh, to join and have a conversation with us as well. Let me start with Sujata Ji, if you can hear me, ma'am. Sujata Ji, uh, so we are doing Save Democracy. We are doing Bharat Jodo Nyaya Yatra. Uh, we've been told that if Narendra Modi's BJP wins the election, India will never see an election. Uh, that uh, indeed uh, we'll all become slaves of Modi. On what are you basing this on in the past 10 years, ma'am? In the last 10 years, we have seen how media has been curbed, how the, uh, the ED, all the constitutional uh, organizations, institutions, how they have been held to ransom, how they are being misused against the opposition. Is it uh, not known? to everybody today how governments have been brought down by Mr. Modi and surprisingly whenever the BJP spokesperson speak about it, they tell us that uh, you know they, they try to hold a mirror to us and say that well you did it. So that is the justification that they are doing. So that means they have no arguments. When you talk about uh, democracy today, we, we are seeing the kind of hatred which has been spread on days which were revered by everybody across this country. We have seen uh, the kind of violence that we have never seen before. We have seen how we have been told the, that there were jumlas of 15 lakh rupees coming into everybody's account. And that includes the jumla of two crore jobs per year. That means 20 crore jobs. No, no, no. no. So my, my question was, no, the charge is very serious, ma'am. We are saying yes. that India as a democracy in three months time will cease to function. Uh, if the BJP wins, that's a very serious charge. That's not about, about election why. promises. So your party I president think. says that India will cease to function. Election in this country will never happen again. What are you basing that on? The BJP and the RSS have hatred towards the constitution of our country. It is this very constitution which has helped Mr. Modi reach where he has. But it is the RSS BJP combined that hates this constitution and we are seeing the okay, way... If they, if they hate the country so much and the constitution so much, why haven't they done it already? What are they waiting well, for in your opinion? 
Well, you are seeing uh, what is happening across the country. You are you talk about uh, the UCC, which should be a uniform civil code for the entire country. But whenever there are elections in Gujarat, you have an announcement over there that we will be bringing in a UCC. And then in Uttarakhand, we have seen that recently. So what does that mean? That you are trying to create this environment of fear, of polarization. And that is what you are okay. doing right now. Ma'am, I, I, I know, I know, I know there is an... In in so ma'am, there... Yes. Just please, complete. please go ahead. In the last ten years, they they what they couldn't do, they will certainly do now because Mr. Modi knows that he is popularity, which which uh, was there in 2014, has been on a gradual slide. In 2019, he had to ask votes in the name of the Pulwama martyrs, and that is why we okay. are saying that he does not want elections after this one if he comes okay. back. Did we all become as Indians? Although this was before I was born. Did we all become as Indian slaves of Indira Gandhi in 1975? Uh, well, when you talk about Mrs. Indira Gandhi, Mrs. Indira Gandhi came from that generation which wanted us to have that the kind of democracy that we should be having. But what happened in 1975? If you go to the you know to the entire context, you can't just uh, decide in just these one-liners that she was trying to make everybody. Uh, she was a dictator, or she no, was but you are reducing it to one-liners in the context not, of Narendra Modi. But Indira what, Gandhi's emergency should not be reduced to a one-liner. How does that make sense? RSS. It is the this very RSS which you which was supportive of her at that time. Okay. It was the Shiv Sena chief, uh, Shri Thakre ji, Bal Thakre ji, who supported her on uh, the emergency so the so people who supported her were worse off than the person who was the agent of doing it okay all right okay so i'll okay ma'am india as a country right now uh, seems to be uh, growing at around 6 7% uh, there seem to be uh, inflation under control there are a lot of people out and about and really? doing things and making money i don't know ma'am uh, I, I can speak from anecdotal evidence uh, it seems to be doing okay are you sure you are trying to convince india and indians that the country is in desperate straits and an SOS call can only be answered by the Congress? Of course, and that is happening across the country. And, uh, you know, I like it uh, when uh, when the media says that the Congress party is not on the ground. I'm sitting here in Telangana for the last more than no, one no, month. I've not said I've you're not here, on the ground. All our workers are working. So hang on. So all our workers are working and we know what the people on the ground want. They want jobs. You might not see the price rise. The government might not see it because they are the ones who are giving us the data. They've not had an NSSO okay. survey for the okay. last so many years. Why? We have to depend on CMIE data. Where, where are the NSSO surveys? Ask the government this okay. question. So why isn't your party leadership instead of talking about uh, uh, these matters, discussing a better plan of how you're going to create 100 million jobs, how you'll curb inflation, how you'll take GDP growth to 10%. Where's the plan, ma'am? So, Jata ji, is there a plan? Do we have a plan of action of how you're going to take we us there? We are working yeah. on it and when our management is clarified. Because Mr. Modi has, has stolen the word guarantee also. Because here in Telangana, for example, the six guarantees that we had promised, two are already in place and two are going to be given very soon. The right to Barosa and others are going to be given to the okay. people of Telangana now in this very month. So what we uh, promise to the people of India, we deliver. We don't hide and say that, oh, the country is in dire straits, we don't have money. In 1947, when this country got independence, we did not make a single needle yet. We made this country prosper and reach where it did okay. under our government. Our no, for for sure. Let's not kid ourselves. We were uh, recovering from a famine in 1943. Uh, and we couldn't feed ourselves. Uh, we had a green revolution, a white revolution. Uh, many things happened in this country, uh, certainly before 2014. Many things will happen in this country going ahead as well. Uh, the point of the premise is who's got the better plan and the potential to live, deliver us a better plan. Let me give Vinita Hariharan now an opportunity. Ma'am, first of all, I'll let you respond to the allegation itself made by the Congress party president who says uh, not only that India will never have elections again if, you, if your party wins the next polls, uh, but we'll all become slaves to Narendra Modi. How do you respond to that? Congress has absolutely lost its plot in all ways, uh, you know, so they have nothing, no narrative and no story to tell. It's just a disgruntled lot of leaders who want to point fingers at a very, very, uh, you know, a, a growing edifice, I would say, a monolith that we have built across uh, the nation the last 10 years. 
what we have done is no uh, no small uh, you know event there's no it's no it's no small feat what we have achieved over the last 10 years for the country because it is it's not a rhetoric it is it is actual facts because like just like what uh, congress spokesperson said i am in sindhudurg now in maharashtra i've seen what kind of benefits the beneficiaries are you know they they claiming that they've got from the modi cover it's not just uh, statistical uh, you know data that's floating around uh, in policy circles it's what's penetrated to the ground the kind of revolution that we have seen the development revolution the digital revolution the platforms that we have created for uh, subsidy transfers right to the last mile so these are the things that have revolutionized india it's it's a total transformation from 2014 till now the last 10 years it's not just rhetoric it is actual uh, grow, you know work on ground that has happened it has reached the poorest to the poor and we have, we have lifted 35 crore people out of poverty so what okay all right so so vinita so vinita ji okay okay let's okay if we put if we put aside the schemes and the houses and the toilets and put aside that for a second the argument from the opposition is is an institutional ideological argument they are saying that you are a you are a threat to institutions and democracy itself how do you respond to that absolutely not we have seen the kind of the number of institutions that we have done over the last 10 years so many iit so many iim so many aims what more do you need what do you need by institutional freedom we are against the you know against corruption of all kinds and we would uh, use all our uh, means to end corruption of all sorts we have seen the kind of corruption the kind of scams that have been that have surfaced over the last uh, so many years before 2014 and how the coalition partners have actually brought down the upa2 we have seen that in the scam in scam after scam and even now they're not able to stitch up an alliance they're not able to cement an alliance for god's sake and and you know then they point fingers at a at a at a monolith that is structured that you know bjp is actually not at all impacted by these kind of allegations because we know where we are going we know our story of vikas and we know where we are headed and we have seen the kind of validation that we are getting okay. state after state election after election okay okay so, so if, if we can if we can all buy into the concept that we all aspire for a better india tomorrow a viksit bharat nobody can really dispute that that we all want a viksit bharat uh, vinita ji why would a continuation of a government under prime minister modi for a third term help advance the cause of viksit bharat better than a term let's say under the congress or in the opposition no i mean the story is for all to read uh, we've seen the kind of promises there's no promise the guarantees that they've set you know in come and wherever they've promised it's it's all fallen through they're not able to deliver on their promises we've seen the corruption that has emerged already in karnataka we've seen the mayhem that that's happening in the states that they've won elections by just uh, you know fooling the people with their uh, kind of guarantees and the farm loan waivers and so on and so forth we have seen the kind of development that we have seen the last 10 years we have we ever become the fifth largest economy and going to become poised to become the third largest economy from the fragile five and it's not just the economy it's a 360 degree revolution of development that we have seen right from the lowest level to the highest level there is so much of egalitarianism now there is so much of vikas now now we're going to go from just basic amenities we had to build basic amenities from 2014 the kind of coverage that we had okay. for all our programs for all the basic amenities was just below 15% or so in 2014 we've taken it to almost 100% now we're going to go to the aspirational needs of the people we're going to go to innovation we're going to go to artificial intelligence we're going to take the country to the next level that is viksit bharat that we have a vision we have a clear vision of what okay. viksit bharat should be all right be like. okay uh, uh, the the congress has said that all right if you're looking for a plan well just give us some time we're discussing it a manifest so will be out and we'll tell you how to build ai and quantum computing in the space industry i'm sure that plan is going to come in great detail to us very very shortly uh, let me get deshrath nigam before i get nikhil nikhil into this mr nigam obviously we're going to see rhetoric in an election let's not be surprised that rhetoric happens at the end of the day we are being presented by choices those choices can be parties it can be people but i'd like to think for sensible people it's about what is most likely to succeed for india are we seeing a cogent plan developing a cogent offer on a cogent action oriented solution for whatever good bad and ugly needs to be done from the opposition sir well uh, rishab in fact i have been doing a program with you since 2015 when i believe none of the participants here were uh, probably representing any party at that point of time as a spokesperson and you had asked a specific question as to what is your alternative plan to bjp to the congress spokesman he had given exactly the same answer which sujatha paul is giving today and i clearly remember 
and we were sitting in a studio with you. And exactly the same answer we are getting from Sujata Paul today. A lot of water has flown. Various elections have taken place. But the Congress is steadfast and constant on that particular answer. We are working on it. And that is what has led to Congress's downfall and destruction today. What we expect from a uh, opposition is a very constructive approach. Uh, that approach, and we do require a strong opposition. It's not that we don't require. We require the critical analysis of individual policies where the improvements have to be done. The, these are the places where improvements have to be done, if there, there are at all, because there is already a feedback mechanism with the government which continuously improves. If there are shortfalls, that they improve themselves. But where is the Congress? Where is the alternative plan? If you continue to keep on working, and, and, and believe me, when I hear Prasant Kishore saying that Congress is, doesn't even know what it is doing and, and, and doesn't even have a plan to do and how to react also, and as, as somebody who has seen Congress from, you know, top to the bottom and going down, sliding down, it really troubles us as, as, as an individual, as a citizen of this country. Okay. Leave aside the rhetoric. Okay, Leave so what would be, okay, so, so rhetoric is going to happen. Let's not kid ourselves. Ideology is a large part of elections as well. Uh, and who you like, don't like is also a large part of elections, regardless of the plan. But if it were to be then, Deshrat and Nigam, what would we be hoping? I would certainly be hoping that the Congress party comes and they have committees who are going to talk about developing the blue economy in India or talking about how the solar sector is going to perform and how certainly the jobs will be generated and how, uh, how India is going to become an AI hub or how we're going to build our ports and we're going to double our trade or how we'll build the IMEC corridor and other things. I haven't seen it yet. I'm sure it's coming and we'll receive it in a few days. But uh, if it were to happen, does this matter or is it only the rhetoric of ideology that matters during election, Mr. Nigam? Uh, Rishabh, in fact, people like competitive politics and politics has to be all about competition. If BJP tells we will go seven steps, you have to say my plan is about the eighth step. We are going to do one better than the BJP and it has to be a concrete and practical plan. It cannot be just merely manifesto. BJP has digitalized the country. It has removed corruption. Direct benefit transfers are taking place. And therefore, you've got to say something better than that. You've got to give uh, the uh, farmers, you've got to think about women. Women participation in labor force has phenomenally increased in India. And then the EPO for data clearly says there is a 58.7% jump in the uh, formal sector of the employment. You know, you know, sir, are, yeah, you know, sir, I find it difficult to judge on the basis of data because the data in India is, uh, is to be taken with skepticism. I, I, I yeah, can but you can EPA judge if you data. step out on I the streets. Yeah, you can step out on the streets and visit the bazaars and the markets, and you can get a general flavor of how the economy is doing. Okay, it's no, it's not scientific, but if the shops are full and the people are out and about and they're and they're shopping and eating food, uh, and they seem to be in good spirits, it gives you an indication. So let me now quickly uh, try to get a, a perspective in uh, from Nikhil. Nikhil, now I accept that rhetoric is part of politics. We accept that personality, ideology are all part of politics. But the premise of the Congress's point of argument, at least in large measure, seems to be that India's democracy is under threat, the constitution is under threat, and we are in a, in a, in a crisis. We are in a constant fight just to survive as who we are. Is that true? Rishabh, I honestly believe that is true and it is not just the Congress party saying that a lot of people in the country, a lot of people beyond the country have been going about saying this very same no, no, thing. Forget the people I beyond love, the country because I, I don't care what the people no, in Cambridge say or in Canada no, say. I'm asking, no, I, is it true? Are we, are we at the precipice of becoming a, 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 a failed state, having a constitutional rip to shreds? Is, is this what I, you're thinking I, is happening? I, I, First of all, I don't think that we are on the verge of becoming a failed state or that the constitution would be ripped to shreds right away. And that is not what Malikarjun Kharge or people from the Congress have been saying. Right. Yes, they do say that in 2024, if the BJP wins with a thumping victory again, we may not see a very fair form of elections go moving forward. And the best example of that happened very recently in the Chandigarh mayoral elections. Chandigarh mayoral elections aren't even that important when you compare them to the Lok Sabha elections or state elections. Yet we see in how a brazen manner the uh, deputy commissioner 
uh, just walked up the dais and let uh, walked off the dais and let the bjp people tear off the vote slips eight votes were declared invalid i mean it it, it is just beyond me that and one alliance has 20 mem- 20 voting members and an other alliance has 15 voting members yet the one with the 15 wins because eight out of the 20 votes were declared invalid and also when a question was raised raised to the bjp spokesperson about the institution speaking and she went around about iits and iims i'm pretty sure rishab you did not mean iits and iims and you're talking about the watchdog institutions like the election commission and other such bodies and we have been seeing a slide in the manner that these organized uh, these watchdog institutions have been acting when an narendra modi does something wrong from the bjp the election commission barely gives him a slap on the wrist but when somebody from the opposition does, does something the election commission goes okay. goes against them all, all right. out so let's play devil advocate for a second nikhil why is he already done it i am not drawing the assumption and i'll be you know naive of you to say that oh the congress party has never fixed an election in 80, 80 years and and vote stuffing never happened and ballot box capturing never happened it all happened okay we've all seen it happening Uh, but in a larger context where we are saying that the entire fabric of the constitutional establishment is going to collapse why has it already collapsed then rishab the india that we are living in today has been the product of 70 80 years of good rule by different parties uh, different leaders we have a very robust constitution we have very robust institutions and all it, of it, it cannot took, be turned upside down it took indira down. gandhi hours all your robust institutions it took them hours so when you're saying no, institutional points, collapse what the courts were doing that. what the president of india at that point of was doing rubber stamping it we can have this argument my question is why is it not happened in 10 years that is going to happen in the next 5 two very important points to that when indira gandhi imposed the emergency we did not have a judiciary that appointed itself our institutions at that point of time were not as strong as they so are today so she did number abuse one. them number two number two indira gandhi was also the one who called the elections in 1977 i am not going to defend her imposing the emergency i believe it is wrong and that is something rahul gandhi has himself admitted okay. but so far as strength of institutions is concerned okay. the independence of institutions today or rather before 2014 was far, is far stronger than what it was in the okay. 70s okay all right nikhil Cannot okay nikhil for the just for the sake of of making a point across to the people watching and eventually some of them will be voters do you understand how specious it sounds coming from the congress party having imposed that emergency in this country having jailed uh, many of these if not the mentors of all the current day leaders having suspended the printing of the press to come and say that it, the media is sold out and it is dominated institutional collapse is sounding do you understand how specious it sounds Rishabh, have we not seen news anchors and news editors being removed from their job just because they criticized Narendra Modi? Have we not seen instances of journalists? No, that was not my question. My question was that after you shut down the electricity at the presses, jail everybody, and impose an emergency in the country, and then you say, "No, we stand for democracy," and the other guy is a dictator. Does that not sound specious? No, Rishabh, whatever the Congress did or did not do, that is not going to change what Narendra Modi is doing. When the imposition of emergency, admittedly, was wrong, two wrongs don't make a right. What Narendra Modi is doing is just as worse. Okay. A lot of senior jurists in this country have been commenting out to the fact that today the state of affairs in the country and the in, in independent institutions is not very different from the emergency. The difference is that that was a declared emergency. Today it's okay. an undeclared right. emergency. You see an undeclared emergency. Being, okay. We are seeing students being jailed for opposing a political event. Okay. We are seeing leaders, uh, sorry, notices by the election commission. on the tallest opposition leaders for saying something adverse about the prime minister in their election rallies for heaven's sake what do you expect an opposition leader to say that we, i love narendra modi please vote okay, for him okay i i don't know i don't know you are sitting here today i don't think you are afraid uh, i'm not afraid i'm going to end this telecast and 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 go home and have dinner uh, maybe uh, a lot of people are, are afraid i can't take a dipstick test of 100 well 100 1.4 billion people but the country is we'll find out in a couple of months so let me get mr nigam back before i get the politician let them have the last word Mr Nigam is an is it possible given what we are seeing in the country where there seems to be rightly or unwrongly maybe everybody is is uh, living in la la land but there seems to be that india is thinking that this is the next 10 10 years or 20 years is india century india century is going to begin and india is going to go from fifth largest to third largest economy that our international stature is 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 rising our armed forces are are are, are Are now doing anti-piracy operations. We are going to reach the moon in the next few years. Is it going to be India's next couple of decades? Certainly, you know. But there was I was listening to some foreign economists. They were saying they were saying it is going to be India's century. Yeah, I don't care about the foreigners. What do what do you feel? No, are we are we um, poised to do do well, or are we are we or the next twenty years look look like gloomy, devastating to you? 
you know, see, India is already doing well. Coming out of the pandemic, the most difficult times that the world had, and it's still the shining hope of the uh, of the world. The World Bank, IMF, Indian economists, Indian government, from Fragile Five, as rightly pointed out, to the top five and becoming the third. Mm -hmm. Everything is in order. It's going. There, is, there are no hiccups out there. And okay. if you have if you have to have a better plan than this, please come out with a better okay, plan. Okay, so you're saying yes, yes, we are going to do well over the next couple of decades. It seems to be we are poised for a historic opportunity. Then my question to Mr. Nigam is, is it incidental that look, regardless of who was Prime Minister at what point of time, the momentum of the country of India would have driven us to become the third largest economy in the world by this reasonable amount of time. Is it coincidental that it happened during Narendra Modi's time or is he an agent? Is it happening because it's Narendra Modi's time? Let me tell you, there was a grave uh, recession and, and depression, economic depression in 2017, about 2017. Then we had a pandemic. If Mr. Modi was not there, I don't think things would have been in the right direction. Things like digital transfers, things like you know transparency, things like social justice movement which is going on the huge amount of empowerment of people women looking after the children the pregnant women these are the factors which are very important if you, and then you have to assert yourself you have to assert pakistan does terrorism and you have to strike it back then you were uh, you were regarded as a strong country these were not what was our response to 26 11 cheapest at best when it happened in okay. mumbai Therefore, okay, if okay. you answered my question. I know there are lots of other tangents, but you, you answered my question. So you say, yes, it is It is because of, not coincidental, there's an agency as coach and captain that matters. And before I, uh, I leave a quick, uh, quick thought and let me get Nikhil back in. Nikhil, what's your opinion? As, as a country, as Indians, forget the politics. Are we, are we poised, are we pivoted to do well for the next couple of decades when we become the third largest economy? Absolutely, Rishabh. We are poised to do the right thing so long as the political leaders at the top do not mess up the country for us as they've been doing in the past 8 to 10 years. We are seeing a slide in democracy. We are seeing a slide no, no, in That wasn't my question. My question was, we are, we are looking at becoming the third largest economy maybe in two or three years. Is for people watching the broadcast, who are all Indians, regardless of who they vote for, should they be hopeful that the country's uh, next couple of decades are going to be a boom time? I think of course yes and I think that is irrespective of who is uh, ruling whether it's the Congress or the BJP or some other party or coalition I think we are poised towards a growth in the, towards a growth based economy the only point is that can we grow faster than what we've grown in the past yes. 10 years and I think that is the reason why the when people all of us are hoping that we can go faster then the only point for consideration left for our viewers is if we are doing well and if you're convinced that India is doing well and going places is it coincidental that Narendra Modi was here for 10 years? Is it despite of Narendra Modi being here? Or should he get some credit for having been here at a crucial point of time? I'll leave a quick point of interjection with the BJP spokesperson. I'll leave the last word to Sujata as, as I did the first. Vinita ji, you wanted to make a point? Go ahead. No, uh, just to answer your point, it's all about leadership. You know, without a concrete uh, and a solid leadership, we just cannot, we couldn't have taken the country to the heights that we are in today. And regarding the other panelists' remark on my institutions, you know, on the on the comment on the institutions, yes, it is about the institutions. It is about the new education policy. What more do you want in terms of freedom? And 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 when you ask something to them, this is the narrative that they give. They just point fingers that uh, at an edifice which is absolutely foolproof. So they have no argument. They have no story to tell. So I would say that India is poised for great growth. And when Modi Sarkar comes back, and if we, you know, India Alliance is definitely not an opposition. It doesn't remain an opposition anymore. So therefore, the country is very, very safe in the hands of the NDA's government. And I think we're poised to go to great heights from here on. Okay. Uh, Sujata ji, it's not the first time that you've said that the country is under threat and democracy that needs to be saved. Uh, do you think that the next 10, 20 years are going to be a huge deal for India and Indians, that we are going to emerge as a top three global economy, as top three global power? Is there going to be a surprise? Only thing uh, that I'm concerned about is that uh, when we talk about uh, 34, uh, 35, Five uh, crore people having been brought out of poverty. Uh, tell me, why are 81 uh, crore people being given free ration? Now, when you talk about uh, us becoming the third largest economy and you don't want to give credit to any government 
of the past that also includes the atal bihari vajpayee government but if you remember when the chandrashekhar government was going out and our government came in what happened at that time there were no forex reserves have you forgotten that how we brought the country out of that phase have you forgotten what dr manmohan singh did when the entire world was going through uh, have you forgotten what narsimha rao did that, or will you give credit to narsimha rao as well 2017 i'm surprised Oh, will you will you, will you give about? credit equal yeah. credit to Narsimha Rao, who was prime minister when Manmohan Singh was finance minister? Of course, of course, I give credit to all the governments before Mr. Narendra Modi. Mr. Narendra Modi is only utilizing all that has been created. He is okay. selling all our nabratans, okay. all our uh, everything that uh, that is there, right. everything okay. that we created. Okay, I think we we reasonably heard out all shades of opinion, which was the point of this conversation. Thank you all for letting everybody speak so that everybody could make their point. I leave our viewers with this thought. Okay. you have to make a judgement call is india doing well is it going places where can it go better harder faster as all of us as a country is it happening incidental of leadership if a, if if your business organization does well is it because of the ceo or the business or the md of the business or is incidental doesn't make a difference who the ceo was the business is going to do well or is it because narendra modi has been prime minister of the past 10 years uh has it built upon india building itself from a hungry famine struck country in the 1940s to now for sure it has and beyond that is the next two months going to be simply an argument of rhetoric and ideology or are we going to see us wood with plans and better plans i'd love to see them on how our ports are going to be built on how lakshadweep is going to be redeveloped and how we are going to uh utilize our economic zones and a blue ocean economy and our port and our international port projects and are we going to get ai and quantum computing and blockchain 3d printing all of them going in india i'd love to see it hopefully we get a chance from all these uh, fascinating manifestos that i'm sure are certainly on our way and to be received very very shortly for more such videos subscribe to the newsx youtube channel hit the bell icon